stop is never easy. Especially when your food just won't stay still. Practice makes perfect. And nothing is a greater motivation than an empty stomach. But for one young cheetah learning to hunt, catching the food is not the problem. It's getting the prey to run away. This is the strange scenario that unfolds before Eric and Karen Gerwin on a game drive in the Serengeti. We were visiting Tanzania. My wife and I and our ranger went out for a drive in the afternoon. The light was actually beautiful. We saw some giraffes and some elephants in the distance, and then our guide thought he saw a cheetah. A young cheetah and its mother sit 45 meters away from a fresh kill. As we got closer, we realized that there were two Thompson gazelles lying dead in the grass. Strangely, the cheetahs have lost interest in their dead quarry. We noticed that there was something else being covered by the cheetahs, and we saw that there was another Thompson gazelle fawn. As one of the cheetahs gets up, they make a shocking discovery. It's not dead. It's not dead. It's not dead. Oh my God. Why? It's alive. I would have thought that gazelle would have been killed instantly. The fawn is alive for a reason. This young cheetah needs hunting practice, and his mother has the perfect bait. If only they can get the prey to move. The fawn really didn't know what was going on, and probably had not even imprinted on its own mother. A paw on the rump gets the desired reaction. The fawn's movements stir the cub's natural instincts, and his lesson can begin. The cheetah wouldn't chase it until it would start to move. The cheetah would try to tap it, would get it to run. It would chase after it. It would trip it. The cheetah cub is actually practicing a classic hunting maneuver. An adult cheetah would take that sharp dew crawl, stick it into the gazelle's leg and get it to fall over. The instinctive behavior for the little fawn is to lie still, to use camouflage not to be detected. But in this instance, the cheetah cub actually wants it to run, and you can actually see the little cheetah cub even picking it up to start running. The young cheetah has almost mastered the technique. But will he take the final step and make the kill? While on safari, Eric and Karen Gerwin witness a young cheetah learning how to hunt. Its prey is reluctant to participate in the lesson. But this youngster is determined to master his moves. It lasted so long that it didn't seem like the baby cheetah was going to kill the gazelle. The attempts to kill seemed almost half-hearted, almost in play. The line between playing and hunting blurs. The relationship between the cub and the gazelle fawn was quite amazing. It was not just predator and prey. There, there was more than that. The gazelle was lying on the ground, and the baby cheetah would come up to it and, like, nuzzle up to it. Sometimes the gazelle would walk towards the cub, almost looking like it was trying to suckle from it. But after an hour of hunting practice, playtime comes to an end. The cheetah cub is obviously trying to figure out how to kill this little fool can see it puts its whole mouth over the face of this little fawn trying to strangle it but nothing seems to work there were a number of times when it appeared as though the cheetah cub had killed it and then miraculously it would escape and every time it got up it was like watching the phoenix it rose from the dead ran away looking like it was going to live for another day I had become a little bit attached to the fawn. 
the gazelle fawn wasn't being killed very quickly, often it would scream. And this was very difficult to hear. I guess it's always upsetting to me to watch something like that. And yeah, it got really hard to watch. The cheetah cub finally grabbed the gazelle by the throat and managed to kill it. And the cheetah was able to complete its hunting lesson. It then carried it away and very proudly sat down to open it up from the rear and eat it just like its mother had done. The lesson is a success. For this youngster, these hunting skills mean a chance at survival. In all the safaris I've been on in over 30 years, this was the most incredible sighting that I have ever seen.